What's up guys, it's Flamon from Flamon Miniatures and today I have for you a video tutorial about painting the helmet of my Mordor Orc miniature. As we all know, lot miniatures are not really respected in the painting community, but I want to show you that they can look really cool too. And yeah, so I started painting his helmet by painting it with pure black grey paint from Vallejo, the model color. Set. Serious. And I used this paint for many years and I recently bought a new bottle and this color became much darker than it used to be. And right now my old paint that was called black grey looked like looks like dark grey and black grey is just much darker. So first I painted his helmet with uh, black grey as the base color and now I'm painting one big reflection on his on this part of the helmet uh, with light grey paint. It's one of the brightest colors that I will use and so I'm now creating uh, some kind of a sketch with just the darkest and the brightest colors. As you can see I'm trying to follow the shape of the helmet. I'm not making reference photos this time, I'm just following the shapes. So yeah. Mm, now I took London Grey, which is tiny bit darker than Neutral Grey, and I'm painting new mm, narrow areas on sides of this reflection, creating progressive. Um, my goal is uh, to create progressive difference of colors, like you can see on pixel art. So now I'm adding a new layer of color that is darker than light gray that I used before. And it now, as you can see, creates progression between black gray from black, from black gray through London gray to light gray. And now I'm painting reflection below, below the main reflection on the helmet because you always have on metallic elements reflections below the big reflections. So, but they are always darker and always smaller. So mm, it makes uh, metallic element look more realistic if you do that and if you paint it that way. <clears throat> on, on rounded objects like, like this part of the helmet, mm, the reflections look like this. You've got round reflection and below them you've got reflections that are just curved lines. And now I'm finally taking... What paint did I take? Oh yeah, it was it was dark grey that I forgot to put in here on the list. Sorry. But that that's because I won't use it actually. Mm, I just tried to create with, me, with this another progression between colors, but what I actually needed is that what you just saw and it's that I added a really small amount of this dark grey to my London grey paint, I would say uh, like 10-15% and the whole idea is that I, yes, I am making this London grey just a little bit darker, not like 50 percent of darker and 50 percent of brighter but just a little bit a little bit darker in order to create smooth transitions on between between the base color and the neutral gray but now i decided to first uh, create the create the brightest reflection on the helmet with sky gray paint uh, so yeah a small change of plans so and this reflection is of course located in the middle of the reflections presented in the previous steps. Uh, it's the brightest color, mm, probably, that I will use on this armor. Because I want this uh, armor to be a bit darker than if I would be painting like Minas to leave Warrior. I would say that I'm pretty happy. As you can see right now, we can see the sketch is creating 
there is this feeling of reflection on the surface of metal. Of course, there will be later problem with the fact that orcs should have more worn out and rusty armors. And this is the moment where my heart is breaking into pieces because I like when my NMM is really deflective and looks like this. Okay, but now... Yeah, I kept using here uh, dark grey, but it's not on the list because it was a bad idea. Like I said, uh, a little bit of darker paint added to neutral grey, just to make neutral grey a little bit a little bit uh, darker. And then I'm painting tiny scratches with just the tip of my brush. And when I'm barely touching the surface of the miniature with the tip of my brush, I'm leaving very small amount of paint that is barely visible. And then I'm making quick automatic moves with my wrist uh, that allows me to leave big amount of these tiny scratches. And the further I go from the reflection, and then closer I get to the um, base color, the more gentle my touches are. So I just want to leave less and less of this paint on the miniature. And it, then it works like this. And I'm, now I'm doing the same thing, I'm adding a little bit of neutral grey to light grey make the light grey just a little bit darker and then it's it's easy to create and now we will have a normal speed of my work yes this is finally the normal speed this is actually how I'm working as you can see I'm painting teeny tiny scratches on the surface of the miniature you can dilute your paint even, even more and then you will leave even less visible Mm, scratches with this paint and then it will of course take you more time to work with it so I'm just mm, after applying paint on my paintbrush I'm just removing most of the paint in a piece of paper trying to at the same time make something that looks like if I would be trying to sharpen the tip of my brush because I want to have a very as you can see very pointy end because then I can create really tiny, really thin uh, stripes with it and then it, it works perfect for me. Uh, right now in this tutorial I'm using glass uh, palette uh, from Red Grass Games and I think it works better with oil paints. My paints were drying really quickly on it. I I think I will use it rather for oil paints than, than for the acrylics. So this is why the this is why it looks uh, weird because it's made of glass in my palette. Uh, but it looks pretty, and um, you don't have problems with mold. So maybe some of you could find it more comfortable to work with, I prefer wet palettes. So what I'm doing here, I'm still just applying tiny scratches. You can see how I'm working with scratches on my older videos. Um, yeah, but here I speed up all of this because I know that people prefer rather shorter videos than longer. Than longer. And Recording this took me an hour and as you can see this is a 20 minutes video so yeah it's speed up like three times So every time I want to I want to create color transitions between between these layers that I created in previous steps I'm just adding a really small amount of darker color to the main color that was used for for the layer and as you can see it works great. I used to create a mid-tone that was made from 50% of this and the previous layer but I can see that this is uh, way better to just add smaller amount because when we are painting these stripes we are leaving really small transparent layers of paint and it 
uh, it works better when it's uh, brighter, but it's also perfect when it's a tiny bit darker than the than the layer that we are painting, uh, from which the color came from. So yeah, uh, this is what I do right now. So I would say always like 10% of a darker color, just to change the colors mm, in a very small range of brightness. And yeah, I I must say that I really like how this how this miniature looked like after uh, making all of these color transitions smooth. And yeah, I would I would say at least once more after that now that my heart was broken when I had to apply rust on it. I think it looks so cool right now. And it's and by the way, it's my favorite uh, orcish helmet. So you must agree that it looks really nice. It's really interesting. Uh, so yeah, now I took a bit of uh, dark gray once again, and I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm just making shadows a bit darker again because uh, in places when I've been creating these color transitions, uh, it could be a bit too bright. So I diluted this uh, paint a little bit and made it a bit darker in the shadows. As you can see, it's drying really quickly. Um, so I had a bit more work than I used to. As you can see, I'm not using black. At this point, I'm leaving black just like white paint for some really important situations and I don't think that this is necessary uh, I watched many uh, real armors and um, they don't usually have black um, shadows on places when the light is reflecting it is that a is rather actually it's this orcish armor is even really dark for a real armor so black gray is uh, perfectly fine for the darkest shadows and black I'm leaving for like details below details and yep, right now I'm using black and thanks to the fact that I didn't use it anywhere else mm, now I can make uh, details like where two pieces of metal meet more uh, much more visible than if I would use um, black gray or, or if black was my base color for it so it's good to leave it for some finding solutions so yeah obviously I'm making details darker now with black and it looks so nice of course some details always needs um, fixing in the process they can become less visible and now I'm finally using white grey and I'm using it, as you can see, just to make a few edges brighter and what make, and this at the same time makes them look sharper. It's amazing for me that I didn't use white paint anywhere on this model and yet still uh, the armor looks very shiny and reflective. That's because the whole range is, uh, is smaller, I'm just making dark shadows and then I don't need white paint to make the reflections look really bright and I still have white well I wouldn't use white on orcs That's, that seems like not the best choice for creatures like them but white grey absolutely great mixture a uh, great paint I don't have to make my own mixtures with white uh, because this color is just perfect and now I'm painting tiny scratches on the surface of his armor. I prefer to make scratches with bright color um, than with dark uh, because then it looks like um, the surface of metal is scratched and when you scratch the surface of metal it's uh, very bright below because the top layer of, of metal can be covered in something, can be a bit dirty, it can be it's probably not polished to its maximum polishing potential but when you scratch something 
uh, you get to the sprite uh, layer. So when you're making scratches like this, you make them look pretty realistic uh, and I like that. So I prefer to make them this way. Look how pretty he is. That's a... I think that this is a really nicely sculpted miniature, especially for the Lord of the Rings range. This helmet is great. And this... Now you will witness my great big uh, failure. As you can see, I just mixed uh, Dark Flesh Tone with uh, Glaze Medium, because I thought to myself that Glaze Medium is for glazing, so that would be great to use it for glazing. And that was a very bad decision, because glaze medium is very glossy. I don't want my miniatures to be glossy anywhere. And dark flesh tone didn't work exactly how I wanted, so I decided to go with a bit more orangey color, which can I, I can get from flat earth. And this was actually another failure. I'm not happy with it. So I worked here with the glaze technique, you can learn about the glaze technique from my other videos, just check them out, it's all about applying thin layers of very diluted paint that's supposed to dry pretty quickly and then you apply another layer of uh, thin diluted paint and then it should look good, but this is a good thing. Uh, on the list you can see Vallejo Mecha, Mecha Dark Rust Wash and Dark Texture. I worked here with dark, dark texture because I wanted to somehow get rid of this glossy effect. And uh, spoiler alert, it didn't work out too well. But yeah, these two effects, they are great. I, you, you can generally uh, make um, these rusty effects with normal paints, but actually I think that these two are really, really cool, really nice. So now at this point you can see that I'm getting frustrated with the thing how all of this looks like. So I'm trying to just fix a few shapes. And so I was painting just dot and stripes with neutral gray. Now I'm trying to make shadows darker with black paint. And for some reason, once the miniature gets glossy, it's like no coming back. It will stay glossy forever. I tried everything. Now you can see matte varnish. It's in the top right corner and of the palette. Now a bit more of grey paints because I thought that I can paint a few shadows back because they, are, they disappeared in the process. But I don't know, maybe it helped a little bit. But yeah. Here I am applying this matte varnish and you know what? It doesn't work. I don't know, maybe varnish from other company would work, but this from Vallejo, it, it doesn't work. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's like you apply it on a normal paint miniature and then it doesn't get really glossy. But once your miniature gets glossy for some reason, then I, at this point I don't have a solution. It's like, from my perspective, it's, it's not good. I tried everything, I painted these glossy elements with paints and with varnish that is supposed to be matte and it didn't work. So I apply a bit more, now I'm applying this rust texture with, with the mixture of, of mud varnish and in hope to fix something, but um, it didn't give too much results. I'm very disappointed. So I think that if I wouldn't use this glaze the medium, I would be much happier right now. With this how the miniature looks like, I would use definitely this mecha effects. They are they are really good. I used to use I use them all the time for rust. They are just there's no reason to look for something else when they look perfectly fine. So yeah, um, all you can see is now I'm actually working with black paint to get rid of this glossy effect, but it didn't work out. I hope. Yeah, so this is how it, so how this helmet looks like now. I think it looked better <coughs> before applying this rust. Shadows are, yeah, it, I'm not happy now. It was so much better without this shining effect. 
Okay, but uh, I presented you technique and I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and see you on the next one. Bye.